Hey guys, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another painting tutorial and this is going to be an epic one. We are painting Teclis and the Selenar. I, it's so big, it only fits on the camera like that. <laughs> it's it's enormous, truly. And when you take something like an Oralan Warden and you put it next to Teclis, it's that that's the scale that we're talking. Yeah, so this one's going to be a big one. Just as a quick point of order, oh, actually, the reason I've got my hand here is because I'm holding Teclis on. Teclis is built in a sub-assembly, and so is the Selenar. So, what we've done is we've paint primed the Selenar and the base in Wraith Bone, and we've primed Teclis with white, uh, Corax White. And so, this is because we've got two different tones going on, and we want to kind of, we, we, we wanted to prime them both individually, rather than spend most of the time priming him back up to a white whilst he was attached to the model. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be starting with the Selenar and yeah, now we can zoom the camera back down and you can stop seeing all of the mess. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to start painting from the ground up. This is unprecedented on War Hipster paints, is we're actually going to start with the base uh, and paint our way all the way up to t finally finishing with Teclis. And as you can see, I've got him in his sub-assembly. So the colour that we're going to actually start with is Wildwood. And this is going to be for all of the soil that we've got. Now there's loads of this, but it's nice and simple, nice and easy place to start. So we're just going to start working on all of it this way. And the reason for this is that we don't want to kind of get all the way up to having done techless and then have to make our way back down. Because once the base is done, then it's it's out of the way and any painting that we're going to be doing on Teclis is going to be up here. So we don't actually need to be careful when we're painting the man himself around the base like we would be normally. So we're just going to go around like this and just take your time. There's a lot of uh, soil all the way around him. And next up with all that wildwood applied, we're now going to use some Basilicanum Grey, and this is going to be for all the fallen stone, not for the ruins. So we don't want to touch this stuff. What we don't want to do is we want to use this Basilicanum Grey on any rocks that look like they were already there. Kind of these natural stones. So areas like this rock down here. Like this. So you just want to go around picking out all of those kinds of rocks. They're, they are all over. So you've got a couple of fallen rocks down here. You've got some in here. You've got a lot around the back. So you just want to keep going, blocking in all of these rocks with the Basilicanum Grey. And with that Basilicanum Grey applied, it's now time to get mucky. And we're going to be using three colours now. We're going to be doing the big stonework. Now the three colours we are going to be using are Griff Charger Grey, Space Wolves Grey and Skeleton Horde. And what we want to do is we're going to use a reasonably sized big brush for this. And I'm using a, a medium shade brush from Games Workshop. And so what we want to do is the first thing we're going to grab is some Griff Charger Grey. Like this. I'm going to pick an area to start on, and I'm going to start here on the large kind of bell icon. And what we want to do is we just want to start painting this Griff Charger Grey all over like this in these big broad brush strokes. That doesn't usually matter what size of brush you use. The technique is always the same. Just want to make contact with the model and put it down and around. And you always want to follow the direction that the model's kind of sending you. So in that case, it's a round and around. It's a left to right kind of thing. You don't want to go up and down on here. You just want to follow kind of 
the grain of the model. So we're still just continuing with the Griff Charger Grey. So up here you can see what I mean. The grain's kind of changed because this is more of an up and down kind of thing. So what we want to do is we're going to make contact up here and just start pulling it down like this. Bring it round on that kind of lip there. And we're going up and down on this section, the big flat open section here with this Griff Charger Grey like this. We're going to keep going. As you see, it's just, it's just a matter of using these big broad brush strokes and kind of, particularly with a brush like a shade brush where it retains a lot of the paint, you just want to always kind of stick to the tip of the brush if you can. Because as soon as you start kind of using the whole brush, that's when you'll start to get loads of dark blobs and stuff appearing. Continuing to be quite calm and methodical as we go. Like that. Grab a little bit more Griff Charger Grey for in here. Like that. Lovely. Just a little bit around here. Great. So we're going to give the brush a quick wash. And now that we've got, well, we've got a really nice smooth finish there. But what we're going to do now is we're going to grab a little bit of Space Wolves Grey. And we're just going to apply this to some of the areas that we've just painted to add a little bit of a different shade. We also want to use the Space Wolves Grey in kind, inside kind of any of the battle damage just to apply a little bit more of a shadow. And you always want to wash it off every time you go back because you don't want to contaminate your pot with a bit of Griff Charger Grey. Making a guest appearance in your Space Wolves Grey. Don't want that at all. Like that. You see, got a lovely kind of different kinds of shades and mixtures in there now. So what we then do, take a little bit of Skeleton Horde, not very much at all. And we just want to, again, apply this in more of a dabbing motion. over the top of that Griff Charger Grey and around that Space Wolves Grey. You can see there it gives this, gives this really kind of nice faded look. We don't want this to be all over. Again, we just want to kind of do it in patches. Once again, just washing the brush. Grabbing a little bit more Stellarton Horde. Yeah, grab some in around here. And with all that stonework done, well, it's not finished yet. We are going to do some highlights, but we're not going to do them just yet. But what we are going to do is we're going to move on and paint all of the tree branches that you can see. And we're going to create a mix. We're going to use four parts core grunt of fur, one part cycle brown, and then maybe like one brush load of contrast medium just to keep it flowing nicely and to mix those colors together. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some on our brush we're going to pick a tree to start on. I'm going to start on this one here. And we're just going to start painting this mix all over. The wood. <laughs> like this. And the reason we're not just using straight wild wood is because we've already used that on the soil. So we don't want to basically have the same colour again. We want a bit of variation on the, 
And we want these trees to look like they're kind of full of life. But the gorgrunt of fur on its own is a little too red. So we've added that saigor brown just to take the edge off it a little bit. So we just want to be careful around all that stonework whilst doing this. And next up with all that wood done, we're now going to paint in the leaves and we're going to be using two colours for this. We're going to be using Orc Flesh and Dark Angels Green. And what we want to do, we want to first take some Orc Flesh and we're going to pick some leaves to do this on. I'm just going to do this right here on the front. So we just want to get this Orc Flesh all over these leaves like this. Good coverage of it, like that. I'm going to do the underside as well. Just do this whole section to illustrate the whole point. So we're just getting this orc flesh all over. Like that. However, it's now a little bit too green for our taste. We're going to brush a quick wash, and then we grab some Dark Angels Green. And whilst it's still wet, we basically just, once again, go over that Orc Flesh like this, mixing the two together. You can leave some patches of the orc flesh just shining through to give it a little bit of variation. As you can see there, we've now got a really nice mid, well, a really nice verdant foresty green. So you want to go over all of these trees like this. And with the green leaves of those trees complete, we're now going to work on the grass. And the colour that we're going to use for this it's just Militarum Green. We just want to get this Militarum Green all over all of these blades of grass. Like this. And with all that Militarum Green applied, we're now going to take some Shyish Purple. And we're going to use this on the large lantern down here on the base. What we want to do is we want to just get a nice even coverage of the shayish purple all over the insides of the lantern. Don't worry about getting it on that decorative edging because we are going to go over that in a metallic so we don't need to worry too much about Getting this shayish purple all over that wraith bone. But where you do want to be careful is when you get close to any of the details we've already painted. Because a big purple blob will show up. <laughs> and with that shayish purple applied, what we're going to do now is we're going to focus on the metallic details. And what we're going to create is a roughly two parts Stormhost Silver to one part Retributor armor mix. And we want to blend it all together with a bit of water. And we want this will give us a really nice white gold. And what we want to use this on, is we want to use this on the decorative awning down here. We want to use it on the other one that's down here. You can see it there. And we also want to use it up here on this big Thing. this decorative awning and we want to use it on the edging and the decoration of this giant lantern type thing so we want to just go around blocking in all of these areas with this color and then we'll come back and next up with that Retributor Armour and Stormhost Silver mix applied, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Basilicanum Grey. 
we're now just going to shade all of that gold just to kind of give it that ruined beaten up look that you would expect from some ruined metal such as this. You don't want to use tons of basilicum gray at a time, just want to take small amounts. So you effectively just want to kind of almost just take the edge off that gold like that, just make it look nice and worn out. You want to go over all of these gold details like this. Just being careful when we get close to anywhere that we've already done. And with that Basilicanum Grey applied, the base coats are now done on the base. And it's already starting to look really cool. Um, so what we're going to do is before we do any highlights is we just want to make life a little bit easier for ourselves. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to fill in all of this blank space here. Uh, and the color that we're going to be using is Sterling Battlemire. And this is because we've painted all of that soil with the wildwood. So you want to get this all over all this empty space because when we do a dry brush for all the soil we want to be able to capture all of it at once rather than come back later let's just get this we can just get this bit done and then we can start to highlight all those base details so just take your time be really careful with the sterling battle mire so as not to get it all over any of your lovely hard work so far And with all that Sterling Battle Mire applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to highlight all that soil. And the way we're going to do this is by applying a dry brush of Tyrant Skull. And so what we want to do is just gently dry brush across all of this Sterling Battle Mire, but also across all of that Basilicanum Grey Rocks that we've done and the Wildwood uh, soil. And we also want to use this dry brush across the tops of the grass that we covered in the Militarum green, like this, just to make the grass and, you know, and the ground just appear more unified. And you don't want to use loads as you do this. You just, it's kind of a nice gentle dry brush because if you use too much, you'll end up like, you'll end up like splodging and you really don't want to do that on like the actual kind of the, the model itself on that detailed soil. So as you can see there, well, we've got this nice kind of unified blend as well as over that Basilicon and Grey. You want to try to avoid the trees and the, uh, the kind of the Griff Charger Grey, Space Wolves, Skeleton Hordy stuff for now. But if you do catch some of this tyrant skull on there, it's really not a problem because this is just, it's its kind of like a, it's like a unifying color in a way. So it really doesn't matter too much if you get it on, on those areas as well. And with that tyrant skull dry brush applied to all of that rock and all of that grass and all of that mud, you can see we've now got, well, we've now got some life in the base and it's starting to look really cool. So what we're now going to do is we're going to dry brush all of that rock and the color that we're going to use for this is blue horror. And we just want this to be very, very gentle. And we don't, because we don't want this to, we don't want to get this all over the place. We just want to catch the edges of all of those ruins with this blue horror. So just be really, really gentle and steady as you go. Because you just, as I say, you just want to catch those edges like this and you can see what that's done it's just giving it a nice little bit of an edge highlight 
And we just want to go and do the same thing again down the other side, like this. So we just want to go over all of these rocks like this, just giving it this very gentle blue horror dry brush, like this. And just be careful when you get close to areas like the trees and the ground. And with those dry brushes done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Sycorax bronze and we're going to use this to highlight the gold. So I'll show you down here. What we just want to do is we want to pick out the edges with the Sycorax bronze. And the reason we're using this bronze is because we don't want this to be like a super shiny blingy highlight. We want it to be quite a quite a worn highlight, as it were. But we just want to introduce a tiny bit of that shine back into the gold details. So we just want to keep going around with the Sycorax bronze. And with that metallic highlight applied, what we now want to do is we want to highlight all of the wooden trees. And the colour that we're going to use is tusk or fur. I'm going to use a small amount of this because all we want to do is we basically just want to add a tiny little highlight of this around the sharpest points on each of these trees, like this. So you don't want them to be super in your face. And the, uh, the mix that we've already added of the uh, Saigal Brown and the Gorgonta Fur so we've done a really nice job of making them appear quite natural. So just using this very considered approach. Just want to pick out some of the sharp edges. And it's also just to add a little bit of variation in that wood particularly where it might be a little bit darker or a little bit lighter, as you can see already. We've got a little slightly different variation in that tree. So we just want to go around each of these wooden trees like this, and then we'll come back. And with all of that done, the base is now finished. So what we are going to do now is we're going to work on the selenar. And we're going to work on the inside of the selenar first as opposed to the back, because the back is all kind of lovely dark browns, but the inside is where we've got various different colours going on. So what we're going to do first is we're going to make a roughly five parts skeleton, no, five parts contrast medium to one part skeleton horde mix. And we're going to use this all over the inside of the selenar. And so what we want to do is you just want to start painting this thin down skeleton horde mix all over the selenar, going up to around about where the kind of the back takes over, so across this kind of front of the wing. We just want to get this all over. Now, much like when we did the the rocks, because we've got large open spaces, what we want to do, we just want to move this skeleton horde mix around as we're doing it. Just being very careful so as not to leave any really dark splodges. Thankfully, what we've got to paint is really textured. So there's loads of recesses for the paint to kind of run into. So just kind of when you get to the end of a section, just make sure you kind of finish it near a recess. And I'm using a medium shade brush once again, because this just helps. With being able to get a nice smooth finish across these large open spaces. And as I say, we're going to do this all over. I mean, I know I'm focusing on the wing, but we're also going to do it across the body as well. 
and along this kind of fur in here. And with that Skeleton Horde contrast medium mix applied, you can see we've got this lovely stained brown, lovely kind of soft cream colour across the Selenar's fur. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to create two mixes. We're going to create one that is roughly eight parts contrast medium to one part gore grunt of fur. I'm going to make one that's roughly five parts contrast medium to one part skeleton horde. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this now to basically create those blends that we're asking for across the miniature. So what we want to do is we want to take our gore grunt of fur mix first. I'm going to pick an area to start and I recommend looking at the box art for this just to help you as to where these will be. But one of these areas is, of course, along the legs. So what I want to do is we want to start applying this Gore Grunter Fur Mix over the top of where we added that skeleton horde all over the leg. Just making sure that we get it all over. Like this. like up there to round about there and a little bit around the inside as well like that and then once we've got our section established what we do is we take a small amount of that skeleton horde mix and we just apply it where the two colors meet like this. Just to blend that transition together. Got a little bit more of that skeleton horn mix. Just there. It's a bit blotchy. Like that. So you want to go all over doing it like this. Being careful once we get near that base, of course. And just watching out for any really dark pools. And it's at this point, of course, that you can also involve doing the back of the Selenar as well. So I'd recommend using this Gorgon to Fur Mix all over the back of the wings up here and all over. That, boss, that central area as well. So you just want to go around like this. Just take your time. And then we'll come back. And with that gore grunt of fur and skeleton horde mixes used to blend in our fades, what you can see now is we've got a nice kind of well, we've basically drawn out where we want all our colours to go. So we know that we want this to be a nice strong brown and we want this to be a nice strong brown and we want the back to be a nice strong brown. So before we do that, what we actually want to do is because we're going to be using a series of thin down paints to effectively make it the strong colour that we want, is we're going to paint in the design on the wings. And what this is, requires is just requires some sidewall brown. Uh, and what we want to do is we effectively, at the tips of the wings, we want to use this Seigel Brown to effectively build up those little stripes that you can see on the box art. So there's a little one down here, for example. Now this might seem a little bit weird as to why we're doing this and not getting all of the... all of the colours neatly established. The reason we're doing this is because if you look between on the box. So if you look between each of these kind of tiger stripes on the wings, you can see that there is a fade up through the colors on those as well. So we want to get this done so that we know where those are going to be. And I'm looking over my shoulder at the box art. So what we're doing is we are using this side or brown like this, just to establish where those dark tips are going to be and then we'll go up and we'll start adding the tiger stripes as well. I'm 
like this. And there you have it with those tiger stripes now painted in on both sets of the wings. We haven't done them on the back, don't worry, because they're going to be like a full block colour. So, with those tiger stripes now pointing, what we want to do is we now want to strengthen up all of this reddy brown fur. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a roughly four or five parts mix of Gondras medium and Gorgrunter fur. And we're now going to use this to build up that colour over the top of where we've done all of our Gorgrunter fur already. We just want to use big broad brush strokes here. And we just want to take it up to the point where we're quite close to where we've done that fade. Because we want it to kind of transition from the darker fur to the brighter fur. Now what you can do is you can use the use the recesses of the salinar itself to dictate where that's going to be. So like for example here on the leg we've got that area in there which we can use to kind of go right well that's going to be where the fade starts. Whereas on the back we just want to cover the whole thing in this colour. So you just want to go, go around very steadily blocking all of this in. Until we're happy. Like so. Whereas on the wings, what we want to do is we basically, for every layer that we do, we want to block in one area between the tiger stripes, like this. And so I'm probably going to do three layers. And with that second Gore Grunt of Fur in contrast medium mix applied, we're going to do it once again with another Gore Grunt of Fur and contrast medium mix. Uh, same same parts as same kind of uh, level of mixture as last time. And we're just going to once again start coating this all over these brown areas again. As you can see now that we're onto a couple of coats, it's really starting to bring that colour right down, which is exactly what we want. I thought I'd show you the back for a change because we've done a lot of work on the front. Not so much on the back. As you can see, just using these big broad brush strokes like this really just keeps that contrast paint nice and smooth and just gets it done so quickly. It just looks so incredible already. I'm very pleased. And with that, we've now got our ready brown established. So what we're going to do now is going to add a little bit more colour and character to those wings. And so what we've got is we've got a roughly eight parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. What we want to do is we want to take not a lot of it on our brush and we just want to pick out a couple of areas of shadow. Now what these include are here in the middle like this just to add a little bit of variation on the wing and we also want to go a little bit in here and just pulling it out like this to around about there. And what we can also do is we can use this wildwood mix just to add a little bit of shadow around here on the underside 
of the wing like this you can see we're just not using very much at all so we just want to like I said we're just basically just providing some shadow and a little bit of variation in the color because you want it to be quite bright out here we want it to be just a little bit of variation like this as you can see we've now got some lovely 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 looking wings and the wildwood is is the cold shade against the warmth of the fur like that and next up with that wildwood shade applied to the inside of those wings as you can see we've now got some lovely different colors going on under there so what we're going to do is we're going to do something very similar to the back and what we're going to do is we're going to create a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part Saigor brown mix and now what we're going to do is we're going to start painting this all over the back of the selenar his wings now what i would recommend is that you have the games workshop picture to hand so that you can rotate it round to see what this looks like because it's not the whole of the back what you want to do is you want to kind of effectively create it's basically like an m-shaped pattern so you want to just get this saigor brown mix over quite a lot of it but not all of it so it's basically like M so like around here it's a little bit brighter and around here it's a little bit darker anyway do you want to go around like that with this Saigor brown mix and with that Saigor brown mix applied to that back of the wings well he's looking awesome so what we're going to do now is we're actually just going to work on the tail and what we want this to be is we want this to basically be a blend from the gore grunter fur up here around halfway through to the Saigor brown going through the other half so it's a dark to a paler brown. And the reason we haven't done it at the same time is because it would add in that extra layer of complexity. So what we want to do first and foremost is we want to take some Saigor brown and we want to apply this to the tip of the tail going up to that first lug that's holding it all together. So just making sure that we get this whole thing covered with the Saigor brown because we want this to be a really nice dark brown. Like this. You just really want to make sure that you get the whole thing done in one fell swoop so that you don't end up with a weird patchy line when you try and finish it. It is a little bit fiddly as you can see I'm doing some real gymnastics with the model. like that. Again we're not worrying too much if we get this on that lug because we will need it up a bit later. Then what we want to do is similarly again is we want to use the Saigor brown to colour in this bit here and this bit here like this. A little bit easier than the big bit of the tail. We want to just be careful of doing is too much kind of flicking which can happen when you've got something like this. 
And because you're using contrast paints, we will end up flicking Saigal Brown everywhere if you kind of do too much there off of the off of the model. And you really don't want to start flicking Saigal Brown all over that lovely base that we've painted. Because that would be disastrous. There we go. So there we go. Now we've got the main the first part of the tail done. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wash the brush. And then we're gonna once again take Saigal Brown. It's easier to show you on the back, but we want to do it on both sides. So what you want to do is you want to take the Seigel Brown and make contact with it by this bottom lug here. Like that. And you just want to pull the Seigel Brown up to around about there. Like that. You see? Once again, make contact with the model and pull it up. Like that. Grab a little bit more, and then I'm gonna under here make contact with the model, pull it up like this, and like that. Get it all the way around. There we go. So we've got our Saigal brown part established. Then what we want to do is wash the brush, grab a bit of contrast medium. And you want to, around here, paint this contrast medium all over that area. Just to really kind of mix that paint together like that. Wash your brush and then grab some Gore Grunter fur. And in much the same way as that we've just done, you want to make contact up here and pull the Gore Grunter fur all the way down like that. Once again, Gore Grunter fur, make contact up here, pull it down and into that side Gore Brown. And you can see where we added that contrast medium, we've got a lovely bend, blend going into the side Gore Brown. So you want to repeat this all the way around the tail. So once again, cycle brown, pull it down and round. Not cycle brown, call grunt of fur. And with that tail done, you can see we've got this really lovely fade going from the dark on the back through like that to the real dark at the end of the tail. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do some highlights. And we're actually gonna grab a small little amount of towel light okra. We want to use this to just pick out some of the strands of hair on the Selenar, the orangey ready fur. We just want to add this effectively to the tips of some of this fur, like this. Now this is a bit time consuming. We don't want to dry brush it because we run the risk of making some nasty mistakes if we do that. So we're just picking out some of these areas. Not all of them, because you want some variation in there. And because we've used a lot of contrast medium, a lot of that fur has already got a nice little highlight on it. And with that towel light okra applied to all that red, reddy brown, what we are now going to do is we are going to do a dry brush and we're going to actually grab some pallid witch flesh and we're going to very gently dry brush this over all of the pale wings like this. And we want to make sure that we catch those raised feathers that are going across. Now what I would recommend is just as you're dry brushing it, make sure you're going in a diagonal motion across the wing. So you're going from kind of from this direction like this. Over here, what you'd want to do is you want to go from this direction like this. And the reason for this is so that it's all consistent and it's going in the same direction. And with that pallid witch flesh dry brush applied to the inside of the wings, we're now going to do something very similar on the back and we're going to be using Tuscore fur for this. So what we want to do is 
just very gently catch the raised edges of all of the feathers on the back like this. And with that tusk or fur, fur dry brush now done, we just want to very, very, very lightly take another little bit of pallid witch flesh and we just want to, around the bottoms of the feathers, just catch them very gently like this as a dry brush. Very, very, very gently. And next up, what we want to do is we want to take a little bit of Doom Bull Brown and we want to use this to just highlight the sharp sections of the tail tip. And with that, the fur of the Selenar is now finished. And it looks amazing, don't you think? There's so many different tones going on here and it's just, it's actually pretty simple to do. And I love the way that the light just reflects off of those wings with all of that contrast blending and working together. We've got so many different tones in there. It's beautiful. I hope you love it as much as I do because I am in awe. Anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to work on the rest of the details of the Selena. But what we're going to do before we start applying any paint is we're going to use this as a good opportunity to just correct all of the mistakes that we made using some thinned down wraith bone and next up with that wraith bone re-established what we're going to do is we're going to work on all of the warm gold areas and the color that we're going to use for this is retributor armor now the warm gold areas as you'll see on the box up are the ones that have a kind of vaguely orange appearance so it's areas like this front sigil down here And we want the areas on the horns, like up here and up here. These connectors that hold the uh, tassels. These ones down here. And we want to do these things down here. We also want to grab the earrings the inside of the earrings at least. And we also want to do this sigil here on the back with this color. Don't worry about all the armor edging. It's going to be a different color. And next up, with all that gold applied, what we want to do is we want to take some skeleton hoard. And we want to use these to paint in the horns. And so what we want to do is we want to make contact at the top by that first gold bit. Then we just want to pull the skeleton hoard all the way down in one big brush stroke like that. Same again, gonna go onto that side, one big brush stroke down like that. Because we've got a really nice smooth finish. And next up with that skeleton hoard applied, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab some Achillean green and we're gonna use this paint in all of those tassels hanging from Selenar. And with that done, what we want to do now is we want to take some thinned down Corax white. And we want to use this to paint in all of the areas that we now want to be white. And so this is areas like the flats these armor panels. Don't worry about the Selenar's face. We want to leave that with the wraith bone hue because we want it to be a slightly softer, less stark color. So it's got a little bit of variation up there. And next up, whilst we're waiting for that Corax white to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take a small amount of Black Templar and we're going to use this color in the claws we 
You can also use this Black Templar to colour in his toe beams. And next up, what we're going to do is we're going to once again create that same mixture that we used on the base. And it is going to be one part Retributorama to two parts Stormhost Silver. And we're now going to use this to paint in all of the armour trim around the Selenar. We want to basically perform what is effectively an edge highlight. Now don't worry if it looks a little bit like it's lacking any depth because we are going to shade it. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that we get this all over all of this trim. Just going to really want to take your time here. Just being very careful. And with all of that done, we're now going to apply some shades to the miniature. And so the first colour that we're going to make is we're going to make a roughly five parts contrast medium to one part Griffhound orange mix. And this is going to be for all of that sort of ready gold that we've already done. It's just the, with just the flat Retributor armour. So the stuff that we haven't done the Retributor armour. Stormhost Silver mix for. So we want this to be really, really vibrant, very, very, very warm gold like this. We want to use this over all of these details. And with that Griff Hound Orange mix applied, you can see we've got this really lovely, warm, sort of fiery gold. Don't worry if it's a little too orange for now, we are going to brighten it back up. But before we do that, we're going to do some more shading. We're now going to do this on all of that gold, white gold trim that we did with the mixture of Stormhost Silver and Retributor Armour. And so what we want to do is we want to create a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part Wildwood mix. And we want to use this on all of that white gold trim, as I said. So what we want to do is we want to firstly get it all over the trim. But what we also want to do is we want to use a small amount. We basically want to do a recessed line highlight shade with this colour on that white armour as well. So this is what you want to do. Is you just want to run this shade around the inside of each of those panels as well. And with all of that gold shaded, that rose gold shaded, I should say, what we want to do is we want to use that same mix again, the Wildwood mix, and we want to use this to just do basically the same thing, but on the Selenar's features themselves. And it's just going to require a really steady hand to do this. If you do make a mistake, you can always neaten it back up using some wraith bone. And with that done, well, all the shading is now complete. So what we want to do is we want to start brightening all this gold back up. And so the first colour we're going to make is a roughly one parts Retributor armour to three parts Liberator gold. And then we're going to thin that down with a bit of water. And we want to make this mix. And this is going to be for all of that kind of warm gold. And what we want to do is we effectively want to just re-brighten up all the areas that are a little bit too orange for us now. So areas like the gems on here, or rather the egg-shaped devices. We want to do the highlights as well, because we want these to be 
nice and orangey like that. But up here on the sigil, what we want to do is we effectively want to kind of re-layer it without going into those recesses. Like this. And with that done, we're going to once again create our two parts Stormhost Silver to one part Retributor Armor mix. And we're going to fin it down with a little bit of water on our palette so it's nice and smooth. And we're now going to highlight all of the gold. So all of that white gold that we've already done. And we also want to just pick out the sharp areas on that kind of pinky orangey gold. And we also want to pick out the kind of egg-like devices to make them nice and shiny, like this. Similarly, on this gem here, pick it out with this colour. And along all of that edging. And with that gold highlight applied, all the gold is now finished across the model. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to use some Fenrisian Grey. And we're just going to use this to highlight the strands of those Achillean green tassels. And once that Fenrisian Grey is applied, we want to take a small amount of Blue Horror. We basically just want to add this to the tips of those strands we've just highlighted like that. So there's a bit of a the light catching off of the tassels. And with those tassels complete, we're now going to take some Magos Purple and we're going to use this for all of the gems. So what we want to do is we want to use the Magos Purple here on the earrings, these little dangly bits. You can see them up here. Like this. What we also want to do is we want to use this Magos Purple on these large gems here at the front. And with that Magos Purple applied, what we now want to do is we want to create a rough mix of two parts Fulgrim Pink to one part Corax White. And we're going to use this really lovely pale pink that we now get to highlight these gems. So on the earrings, what we want to do is we basically want to effectively cover over the bottoms of the gems like this. So the Magos purple rests at the base and this Fulgrim pink Corax white mix goes towards the bottom like that. So you get this nice little fade going on. Whereas on areas such as these main gems here on the front, basically want to do a highlight of this color around the bottom and outside edge like that and with that fulgrim pink corax white mix applied we're just going to finish off those gems by using a small amount of the corax white to add a little spot highlight so on the earrings we just want to do it on the end here on these main ones on the front we just want to do a little dot here at the bottom of the gem and on these big ones down here we want to do this in the middle of the gem. We can also use this Corax White to apply a little bit of an edge highlight to the areas on the Selenar's face. And with that, the Selenar is now finished. Uh, wow, what a fantastic, what a fantastic halfway point because we've still got Teclis to do. But what we want to do is we just want to kind of finish this guy off because having got uh, 
techless built separately we don't actually need to really worry about this guy once he's once he's completely done so what we're going to do now is we're now going to stick some tufts to the base now i'm using the midland tufts from games workshop and you can use whatever tufts you want how very generous of me but what we want to do is basically is we want to take the tufts and just kind of go a little bit crazy with them yep that's a lot of tufts i did promise you we were going to use a lot of tufts so with that done all that remains is to paint the rim of the base and the color that i'm going to be using is steel legion drab and we want to use a couple of thin coats here just to build this up and get a nice strong finish and there you have it part one in the books the selenar and the base are now finished what an incredible model i think you'll agree it's massive but the contrast is really really just almost perfect for it with all those textures on the base and on the selenar itself oh it's an absolute dream to work with i'm really enjoying this stay tuned for part two if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to support me further like these legends on the screen you can do so head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or go to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, do all that good stuff. And if you want to be kept up to date, make sure to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.